Welcome to People Pursuing Greatness podcast, episode number 49. So close to 50. So close to 50. I didn't think when I started this podcast in 2017 that I would actually be sitting here um, in 2021 talking to you guys. This is awesome. So thank you guys for coming along for the ride. If you're new, hello. Got lots of cool episodes if you want to go back into the library. Uh, today we're joined by Christian Gonzalez and Patrick Ryan the second. Um, these two gentlemen are Jedis in specific arts uh, of, the, of the health discipline. Uh, so Pat, as you guys know from previous episodes, and if you're new, he is a personal trainer, um, a very successful one. And I say successful that he has great turnouts for his clients. So he's in the Albuquerque area. Um, you can find my man at aware.training. And he is, he is brought on Christian Gonzalez, a friend of his that uh, I very quickly became friends with, that is a physical therapist. So the gentleman is actually in his final days of getting his board certification to become a legitimate um, physical therapist. So he's motivated to say the least, but beyond that, he's got nothing but knowledge when it comes from the medical physical therapist background. So I thought you guys would enjoy this. Of course, Pat thought you guys would enjoy this. So um, hopefully you guys will get some some um, some awesome tips and tricks to kind of keep yourselves moving. That, that seemed to be the theme of the podcast as we went along was self-care and continuing, um, you know, continuing care that um, ultimately adds to longevity and aging with, with some grace. Like we even talk about in the episode, it doesn't sound very manly, but, um, you know, you you don't want your back to hurt. You don't want your knees to hurt when you're even in your thirties, you know, leaning towards your forties and, and, and North of that. Right. Um, and, and what mindset does it take to kind of get to that point where you're humble enough to ask for help when it comes to, um, injuries or pain, or even just going to the gym and working out, you know, like maybe you don't know what the hell you're doing. We've all seen those crazy YouTube videos of people lifting kind of, you know, extra. <laughs> so hopefully you guys get as much out of it as I did. Um, it was a very, um, uh, insightful conversation between the three of us. Um, and Christian can be found at actaware.net. That is Christian's website. You can also find my man at act underscore aware on Instagram. And he's on SoundCloud as the amazing moniker spooky action. So go and check my boy out there. Of course, Pat, of course, Patrick, excuse me, words, they, they seem to elude me, uh, with this intro. <laughs> Patrick can be found at aware.training. Um, that's his website, um, which is an amazing dot ending his amazing domain dot training. So it's aware.training. If you want to find my man, Patrick on Instagram, it's aware underscore life a B Q. And of course, if you're following the podcast, you're listening to this right now, you know, we're at ppgpodcast.com and all major podcast aggregators. And of course, as always, you guys keep pursuing that greatness. Cheers. So talk to me, man. So, so, uh, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, this dude. is people get, pursuing yeah. greatness. We're just going to roll I, yeah, this yeah, let's train roll right in with this with energy. We got on going, the tracks. Dude. We just, we got them going choo, all choo. aboard. <laughs> right. So, uh, um, just to get started, I want to do something really quick, Patrick, if you don't have food by you, you should grab some food because like I oh, brought okay. just okay. Like some French toast and bacon. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> 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 So maybe just a snack. Just what? <laughs> this is, We're getting our blood sugar up. Is this what I'm missing? French toast on on screen. Right now. <laughs> you can come around and look <laughs> if you'd like. It's so good. It's one of my favorite things in the universe. Is just straight up French I, toast. That's it's officially my favorite. my favorite way to start an episode. So, right there. Here's, I want Scott. you to know that. Hey, this hey, is Christian. This is Scott. <laughs> so I've not. I've Scott and I have known each other since kindergarten we go that far back dude and i've known i've known scott probably since like middle school but i didn't ever talk to him because i <laughs> i talked to his brother so i like had a i had a re-scotting later on i had a re-scotty <laughs> and then apparently pat and i went to school together but i don't remember this furry no Sunday. but you and i met through marlin that's right okay yes i was, I was trying to figure that's that out. how you and i met but right. as far as like 
I don't remember the exact time we sent a friend request to one another or anything like that. So right. it, I don't know. Life works out that Just way. It's like, he's cute. Mm. <laughs> 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 so so <laughs> the, the snacks we got, I don't know which camera to put it at. We'll just do this one. <laughs> the snacks we got. Shout out to my friends, Larissa and Sean Payne out of the UK. Um, very good friends of mine that live in the United Kingdom. Yeah, it looked like that one. Is it still recording? It said zero one. Yeah, it stopped. GoPro, start recording. All right, that's cool. <laughs> okay. Um, so got friends in the United Kingdom and... Yeah, it's we film these episodes on Saturdays. So yeah. I, I always like to do a snack time Saturday just for the hell of it. And that's Christian and I vibe off of one another quite a bit, if you can't already tell. So like his his and my motto is don't forget the fucking snacks. <laughs> okay, that was you. always that's okay. he came out here. Okay, we took him. It. Yeah. So like I was sitting on the couch and Patrick was cooking dinner. And like, we were all high and trying to decide like what was going to be the next move of the night. Like, do we all go get snacks and stuff like that for the hiking trip that we were taking the next day? And I'm just on the couch. I'm just like, don't forget the fucking snacks. And then like, that was just, <laughs> that was the move. And we just got snacks in the middle of the night. And, well, and I just go ahead. Uh, yeah, we we picked out like Oreos and stuff, and Patrick's like, I, "Should I get more of them?" I'm like Patrick, you don't need the whole store. The next day, he ate all the Oreos. All the like, they were all gone. He should have gotten a second bag. I was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the last time that people don't trust my expertise on how much snacks to get for a day trip. So, so if I ever do a day trip with you, don't let you carry the snacks. Is that? No, no, I'll carry the snacks. No, 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 no. Don't let them sit in the back seat with the snacks. Like, they'll just be gone. <laughs> we had food. A small crew of uh, of uh, uh, wayward uh, uh, hikers were stranded, and they starved to death because right. one of their crew ate all the fucking snacks. <laughs> right. But yeah, so, yeah, food, snacks, all that fun stuff are definitely an area where Christian and I overlap and, and bond. So, yeah, these are from the United Kingdom. So Jaffa that's cakes, yeah, huh? they're like little they're fucking they're good little dude. biscuits. Like and, with, with jelly and chocolate. Well, it's or like or, it's got orange on the inside. Yeah, yeah. It's very citrusy. So they're they're really good. McVitie's. I feel like such an American when I see things like this, and I'm like, it's just like, you know, they could like rotate it out, right? Okay, Walmart, rotate some shit out. Let's get a little culture <laughs> in America. Okay. Sick and tired of it. Hashtag swap it out. Well, yeah, and it's nice, it's nice to get just a, a little bit of um am I unplugged? No, it's just the headphones. Okay. Sorry, can you still hear us, bro? I can. Can you cool. hear him? I can okay. hear him. Okay. okay. Um sorry, we got a tight space in here. It's okay. <laughs> with I love I love food and yes, definitely love love snacks. I agree. You get a different perspective on some snacks. Like, it's, like, it's great to see what other people in the world are eating. Of all things, somebody brought me a Toblerone bar, right? Or Toblerone. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm saying it wrong, but it's like an English toffee chocolate. Right. And they're at like all the main grocery stores. You just have to look for them. There's like one box at each store. I mean, they're not popular apparently, but it's like in the UK, this is like a Snickers bar. It's like a normal mm. candy to eat. I say these things. I don't even know that if that's a hundred percent true, but that's just the way it was sold to me that, you know, like, you know, we all think that they drink like Foster's beer in Australia. They don't drink fucking Foster's beer right. in Australia. That's just marketing right you know and they all don't drive subarus like that's again yeah. just clever marketing you know what i'm saying like, well, and that's that, but that's the thing so my i could be wrong but my understanding is subaru is japanese yeah yeah and so but but so hearing that i went for the longest time thinking oh subaru it's an australian brand. australian brand no yeah from my understanding subaru is not australian it it's is not, japanese it's japanese yeah Dirty liars. They, they, they're like closely linked to Toyota somehow. Like I think Toyota owns some stock. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm sure they do. I might have to ask my partner on that because she's actually working for Toyota right now. Um, she's Ooh. actually in Arizona doing training what? with Toyota she's right now. She's working for Toyota. Yeah. We got to wow. talk. Dude. Yeah, for real. <laughs> Shelby, can you hook it up with a forerunner? Or a Supra. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think when she comes I'm just kidding, internal, dude. that might be like a friends and family kind of deal. I don't no, know. but I I know. I, I'm, just, I'm just goofing with Get you. Get us the like, deets. That's um that's super cool. I had no idea she was working for for a uh, Toyota. Yeah, that's but a she might, actually might have insight into the Subaru thing though, because I don't know if that's actually yeah. tied together or not. So yeah, yeah, person ask her. It's uh -oh. a little bit in her mo. So that's cool. No worries. So so uh, podcast. <laughs> 
how you doing, man? So, so your, your specialization, why, why, what, what, what do you, what do you do? What's your, what's your nine to five brother? What do you, what are you into? Talk so to me. I know nothing about you. I know a little bit, but I, my, our listeners don't know anything. about. So, you. so hi, my name is Christian. I'm your residential <laughs> weirdo and goofball. Um, yeah, Christian Gonzalez. <laughs> um, I'm going to school right now for physical therapy uh, to be a physical okay. therapy assistant. Um, I'm actually starting like my clinicals on Monday. So I'll basically be working like a nine to five in a clinic um, for two seven week rotations. I have to take a state board exam and then I'm basically certified to like practice physical therapy. Um, oh, that's awesome, bro. Okay. So going into that, I had three years of experience in an outpatient setting, which is like, um, you know, like your general injury or like surgery or something like that. And they're coming out of the hospital and stuff and you get to do exercises with them. So that was just kind of like where that came from. But Patrick was a huge part in setting up the personal training aspect of things. So, sure. um, you know, I, I think like our friendship started by me asking him personal training questions and that turned into right. me becoming a personal trainer. And then when COVID happened, because Patrick's <laughs> affiliated with o, uh, OTA now, I became an online trainer. Online trainer yeah. And um, I've been doing independent online training since March of last year, like when COVID happened. So right. it's it's definitely been a, a, a cool combination between the PT world and then the personal training world into me. Yay. <laughs> right. Well, and, and, it, and it's cool to like be able to kind of branch out of that. Cause if you're, if you're stuck in that PT world, like I have a, a very, I work in medical, but tertiary to medical. Um, right. If you're just in PT, you kind of jump between PT departments, but if you can actually like do something like the, you know, online training Academy, you guys could actually branch out and start to mix together. You know, in my opinion, you actually do um, the better work. Cause I always feel like when you get into like rehab, you've already fucked yourself up where with you guys, <laughs> Teaching somebody how to properly do things yeah. can, you know, uh, ultimately add years to their lives and then uh, require less injury, require less time at the hospital and and thus actually lowering insurance costs. Right. Little does a lot of people oh, yeah. <laughs> realize. Um, and your guys' job is incredibly important, man, because that's, I mean, the rehab's big, I think, uh, in terms of turnover for like workman's comp type stuff. Right. Because uh, that's what a lot of the bread and butter is with PT. But when you, again, start teaching people how to take care of themselves, even when you're, you know, 40, 50 something year old, um, you know, dad, that's, that's working in the, uh, and, 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 and looking at their health. If you can teach them stuff like you guys, uh, essentially add to their, um, their palate or medicine cabinet as to how to move or how to even rehab themselves after they've been doing these, these jobs. Some of these fucking guys do like 14 hour shifts, you know, laying asphalt or something like that. And then of course they have, you know, back surgery at 45 and then they wind up trying to get into, you know, outpatient with you, you know, and they're so, like, how do I go back to work? And that's the huge exactly. thing is like, how do you go back to work? How do you prevent further injuries? And how do you teach these people to move efficiently? So that stuff doesn't happen again, or it doesn't happen in different places, or they can maybe even take it upon themselves to flip it around and teach other people at their work. I've had patients come back and be like, yeah, I was on the, uh, usually it's auto workers. That was just like, we worked next to like an auto plant and stuff like that. So we'd get you. auto okay. workers who would come in from the line and stuff and they'd be doing, you know, one motion, like lifting a, you know, like eight mile when Eminem is like lifting yeah. the hood and stuff. And he's just doing <laughs> yeah. that like 8,000 times a day. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, man, like why is my back hurt? Wood, yeah. Um, you're doing a, a wood chopper all day, every day. Yeah. Right. So um, teaching people to move more efficiently and to, uh, like almost have a, like a weird sense of pride and like who we are and how we're built and what makes us up um, is, is like, I, yeah, I feel like a, a weird, like Steve Irwin passion for it. Like in the same way that he's passionate for <laughs> wildlife out. conservation. I'm like, look, like learn how to move and control this thing. Cause this is like what we have to work with. Um, right. If you don't know how to move it or use it, that's kind of like just functionally a, a, an issue. Um, right. Like human primal kind of level. Um, so yeah, I think it's cool how it just, it, it falls over and rolls over into different parts of life too. Um, that's amazing, dude. Yeah. Cause I mean, and it speaks to like, that's what Pat and I, I think try to, um, talk about on the podcast is my, my interest is more of a hobby in terms of my function, you know, but I'm, I'm now starting to creep into my thirties and, um, I try to still exercise like I'm in my twenties and, you know, I, I start to come up against things that are not necessarily walls. Um, I don't believe in that. And Pat teaches me to not believe in that, but more, <laughs> more to like, think about like how to just do things more strategically. Well, it's a, and, it's an opportunity to, to learn and to pivot. Yeah. And that's, that's relative to this conversation that this is what fascinates me so much is I, I hope 
at the very least that we can be providing some deeper perspective for not only fellow colleagues, but clients and just everybody as a whole that it's important to create a network that's gives and always puts the client in a position to have a referral and a strong referral to where it's important to know your limits. And it's so prevalent in the industry. And I feel like this is what I'm growing out of. And I feel like it's very prevalent in the big box gym industry is as a personal trainer, you get lumped in and there's no deep nuance to it. So like, for instance, Christian's a personal trainer, but he's very, very heavy on the PT side of things. But in the big box conventional gym industry, and even myself working with dads and having more parental type niches, you just get lumped into being kind of like a yes pro. Right. To where it's like, they tell you, just take on whoever you want to, whoever you can take on instead of actually creating a culture of no stop when you're not comfortable, stop when you're outside of your scope of practice and refer out to another right. professional, even if it's outside of that gym, even if it means that money will not be made in the gym, it will be made somewhere else because it's for the benefit of the client. And that's, that's what's always intrigued me so much about Christian. And that's what intrigues me continued into the future is I want to collaborate with as many professionals as possible to help kind of what Christian's talking about with learning how to just move your body. Right. Is, this is all we got. We got to learn how to maintain it as best as we can. And you, you better believe that I'm not going to be able to do and take care of every facet of your health on my own. Right. I got to build a team. We have to build a team. And that's, that's what excites me about having such a strong friend in, in Christian, as well as other, other, <laughs> as well as um, other friends and colleagues in the, in the industry, some of which we'll talk about tonight. Cause I, as we've been talking, the ideas have just been popping oh, yeah. up like, okay, this, we got this. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're, we'll be good. And I think that it's kind of cool to see your, your perspective too, bro, because a lot of times I'll talk about injury and, um, my mode is to always just to stop moving. Um, and that's just been taught into me. Right. Um, whereas I think a lot of people can, uh, attest to the fact that even as a, like, you know, I don't want to try to make this sound like, uh, some sort of like gender based thing, but as a dude, I think that a lot of times we're taught to just kind of tough through shit. Right. You know, I used to work kind of construction and I fucked my back up one time joking around with the guy trying to like, he had fallen the day before and had to go to the hospital. Cause he fell down the side of a, Jesus. like a, like a ditch side and hit his back. And it wasn't too bad. It wasn't like ambulance stuff. He just, he just jacked his back up. Well, the next day we were all trying to give him shit and I tried to show off and do what he did at 23 and I landed on my back and fucked my back up just the same. Oh, right. <laughs> oh my God. Right. And I just remember thinking to myself, I was like, wow. And every once in a while, it'll kind of come back and give me a little twinge if I pick something up wrong, you know, and it's, I really like to, I really like to, uh, uh, learn how to, um, how should I put this? Learn from that rather than just back off and and say, you know, I'm not going to talk about it and hopefully nobody will notice and it'll stop hurting in a well, week. Well, yeah. And expect <laughs> it to be something where it's like, oh, I'll just take off from lifting a week. And right. it's, like, it's like, no, you need to go to a professional to see like, hey, is the best course of action taking a week and just relaxing or are there other measures that I can be taking? Yeah, this is like, why you hire a pro. Yeah. Right? There's it's, like rationale to take time off in the beginning. Like obviously oh, sure. get rest and like let swelling come in, settle down, like all of that kind of just like general immune response stuff is supposed to happen. So that's fine to rest through, but chronically like for a long period of time, if that changes the course of how you move, you're going to have other imbalances and other places that are going to suffer in that kind sure. of way. Like if, if, if you're not loading your lower back and your core and that kind of stuff, whatever was injured and the way right. that it's supposed to be loaded and that goes other places, whether it be right above or right below your hips or in your mid back, like that shit's going to suffer in some way, because it's going to have to bear the load that the low bag can't take. Um, right. That's something that I found <laughs> See, out. This is what fascinates me. Yes. No, keep talking, man. I love, <laughs> that's I, something, I love it. That's something I found out when um, I hurt my shoulder. Uh, I tore my like labrum rotator cuff and, and stuff in my left shoulder. And Fuck. like, um, you know, I was looking for like surgery and stuff like that. And like that, it just wasn't happening. So I'm like, okay, what do I do next? Um, and it's just, what I found was the pain didn't 
like it wasn't just my shoulder. It wasn't just my arm and stuff. It was my neck. I was having back spasms. I was having Interesting. like um, all of these, you know, related things on top of the stress of being injured on top of the mental stuff on top of all of this other kind of stuff. So uh, like addressing, addressing one issues addresses others. Mm-hmm. It's not kind of like um, it, it, <sighs> It's not like you can look at a puzzle and be like, yeah, I'm going to solve the whole thing in one go, but you start from a corner and eventually you work your way to the point, like you make your way around, you know, and you find different things along the way. Um, I think an adventure, man, I I think it's like a, uh, a motor, maybe like you don't learn a motor pattern or maybe you like learned an improper motor pattern in like an earlier or or had, or had bad influencers, which I think is what a lot of people don't realize is that like Pat talks about it all the time. Like your five closest friends really can say a lot about you and then or they can break you. They can be, but you know, I try to constantly jive to have people that are just, you know, I'm a runner. So I hang around people that are just like five or six, you know, Jedi masters fucking above me I don't know how all the time. <laughs> and, then, well, and then on the other side, you know, I hang around people that are five or six Jedi masters in the direction like you guys are, because if I don't, if I just lean into that direction, I mean, it's like any place where you can have uh, what are they called an echo chamber? You know what I mean? Where you just have people that are, are yes, manning everything that you talk about, you know, and these could be friends from when you were younger. These could be people that you work with, like the people that were laughing when I fucked my back up trying to make fun. Of the right. Guy. You know, and it's like those kinds of guys will tell me that I'm a pussy if I don't just stand back up and go work even to my back hurting, yep. you know, and that that's whatever. But at the end of the day, it's a, it's a decision, you know, it's not good or bad, I guess. It's just really like, how long do you want to last? How long do you want to be able to, um, well, and what do you want your experience to be like and whether or not you're actually open to, do you want it to be healing? (laughs) Do you want it to be a healing experience? Are you open to the process of a healing experience? Because if you're not, then it's, you're not going to get healing out of that experience sure. whether it be well, and the best professional or not like you have to right. be willing to to go through that humbling process of point a to point b and, and like everything in between you know? right. right and that's the see and i think this touches on an element of just life that just continues to perplex me and it ties into what christian's talking about as far as like okay surround yourself with people that reinforce what you're about. And I've gone my whole life, just societally, culturally, we've, there's a common thread here. Like there's just this accepted belief and behavior and aging being synonymous with being miserable. Right. And it's just like, wait till you get old, wait till you get old. Wait till you get old. And it's, (laughs) it's fucking terrifying. And I, 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 I see that as an alarm. I see that as a warning of like, well, how are people that are saying those things living their lives? Right. That's what I take inventory of. And then if they're doing what I like and what I what resonates with me, I'm going to gravitate to that. Otherwise, I'm learning vicariously through other people. And it's like, I don't see, I don't see health and preventative maintenance mm-hmm. through, you know, working with a PT, leaning on a PT, et cetera. I don't, I don't see how that's how that's an issue. Um, yeah. So what the whole <laughs> What it really speaks to for me is just the matter of referring out how important it is. And I feel like what we're talking about, you saying you falling and that community that was surrounding you at that point in time, reinforcing a mindset and a belief of no, how you get through it is you just rub some dirt on it and live your life. When in all actuality, doing that chronically over the course of your life having injuries, not having them looked at, not having a community that supports having them looked at. That's why aging becomes painful, right? Like it's, it becomes painful spiritually. It becomes painful mentally and emotionally, and it becomes painful physically. Well, let me, let let me ask you though. So that, but what I'm getting at, I I apologize. What I get get at is that's what frustrates me so much about this culture of thought and this culture of belief that okay, aging, getting older is inevitable. Like being miserable while aging and getting older is inevitable. Go being in pain, mental pain. Don't talk. It's don't talk about what right. you're going through, you know, keep it to yourself, keep your physical pain to yourself. Like don't, don't get any help with that. And it's, it's just, it blows my mind. So that's what intrigues me so much about people like, like Christian, not only is he a good human being, but he's a solid professional. The dude's going to school for physical therapy. He's right. got a nice set of hair too. Yeah, Thanks, like he, he's he's, <laughs> a, he's good people. He shares this, this, the same type of energy that I share. So it's like, okay, I'm hanging out with this dude. Yeah. So, and what's, what's really fascinating to me 
because I, 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 I feel like t- Christian deserves a, a decent introduction. Like Christian and I have known each other for a few years now, but what fascinates me the most is how he and I met. Okay. <laughs> so, well, because it, for, for me and in my opinion, it speaks to the power of the internet and the power, like I, I will not buy for one second the belief that it cannot connect people and it cannot right. make the world a better place. Look at me and you, man. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, if, if, if I had not utilized the internet and the way that I believe it to be utilized, I'm not saying it's the end all be all. I'm just a guy trying to do my best. Christian and I would never have met my fiance and I would have never met because how, how it works. Shout out. I love you, Mike and Terrence in Nashville, Tennessee. I decided I was going to get out of my comfort zone and go travel to see concerts by myself. I had friends in in town here that I kept inviting. They wouldn't do it. So I decided, okay, I'm just going to go by myself. I'm going to go to these random towns and these random cities and go catch concerts and, and just figure it out. Be, it was a lot of fun, but it led me to two guys. This was back in 2016, right before I started traveling on my own. I met two friends of mine, Mike and Terrence, out of Nashville at a show in Denver. There was a fan meetup. We met, shot the breeze, got along, never exchanged any information. <clears throat> but fast forward um, over, I believe, no, fast forward a few months um, I'm at a new year's Eve show in Alabama and I'm of all places, bro. Right. <laughs> and I'm by myself walking around trying to find a place to eat outside the venue. Well, I look off in the distance. There's two guys that I recognized from like six months prior wow. and it was Mike and Terrence. <laughs> and at that point it was, it was, it was really a matter of, okay, this, this is a legitimate thing. Let's be friends. Yeah, Let's yeah. exchange information. And then Somehow you'll have to fill in the gap there. So Mike and, and Mike and I, Terrence. So I Christian. actually met Mike and Terrence in Denver, Colorado, um, at one of the concerts that Patrick was at. I didn't meet Patrick that day. I just met Mike okay. and Terrence, and I added them through Facebook. And months later, I saw Patrick on there talking about personal training kind of stuff, and it was in the ballpark of like, man, I, I was thinking about doing that. Yeah. And he had like a and a kind of thing. And I just shot a question oh. at him and he answered it. And I'm like, all right, I'm sold. This guy's cool. <laughs> and just send, and send him a friend request. And like, and then I'm sure, and I'm sure you also complimented his fabulous head of hair. Uh, oh, you didn't have the hair then. No, huh? I don't, I, you was, had, I you had the, the beginnings. <laughs> it was the beginning yeah. of the hair. He, he did have the beard. It, it the, was this definitely. Hair. Not the, beard, hair. the beard has been around and for face a little hair. bit. Yeah. So during that time I was, I didn't care. Like I had, I had like the hipster, like man bun for a while (laughs) and it like, my head was pretty much shaved all around. But then I was like, okay, I think it was 2014. I was, I didn't have a beard. I didn't have long hair. Those are two things. He threw his Jinkos in the trash. (laughs) I'm not doing it anymore. (laughs) I, I, and I just decided I've, I want to have a beard and I want to have long hair. Hell yeah. I I don't, I don't care what other people think. I I've wanted to for such a long time. So I went for it. But the point is I liked having the long hair at the bun, but I, I wish it, there was awkward phases as to when, like when the right time was going to come to just cut everything the same length. Right. So, you know, there were times where I looked, I looked a little weird oh, yeah. because the hair was long up top, but I just didn't care. I was like, at some point in time, it'll get long and right. it'll all even out. Um, so yeah, it was during that time I was doing a weekly um, series of, it was called ask that weird bearded guy. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 People would just, I'd go live on Facebook and just answer their fitness and health related questions just to help them out. That's awesome. And yeah, that's how Christian and I met. Cause I remember him shooting comments in those videos. Yeah. And then fast forward to like, what was it? 2018, 2018, 2019, something like that. I, I flew down to Albuquerque and that's when we went on our big hiking trip and hung out right. and all that kind of stuff. We went to Meow Wolf and a bunch of cool mm-hmm. stuff in, uh, in Albuquerque. So hell yeah, dude, random. that's really cool. So then, so do you feel like he kind of helped push you forward on your path towards the PT thing? Um, for personal training? Yes. As far okay. as physical therapy, that's kind of like a different a different avenue that has strings attached. Like it's definitely related, but the... Man, the levels are just so much different. Like you talk about teaching people how to move and stuff like that. Like we were earlier, you know, improving the quality of life for that's maybe for 
the outpatient setting where, you, you know, you're getting those injuries that are, but in the hospital and the inpatient setting, totally different ball game. Uh, sure. You, you have a dude stand up and he walks 10 feet and walks 10 feet back to his, his bed. And that's it. That's all he has. Yeah. He is gassed. He's like lightheaded and stuff. He has to sit down, lay down. That's, that's his exercise. Um, sure. So it, it's, it's really fascinating how, um, how specifically like diagnosis and patient related it is um, depending on the level. And, you know, same thing kind of goes for personal training, but it's, it's for more like a, like a different more function. Focused. Yeah. There's a yeah, different yeah, function. Yeah. Got there. you. No, well, I got Matt, you. And I feel like this is, this is just what I love about having Christian on. I've got some other friends that are in the field it's, it's a holistic point of view, in my opinion. Yeah. And it's seeing how Christian or myself or say, shout out Andrew Nez of Aurora Sky Massage, like massage therapy, mental, you know, psychological um, counseling and therapy, sure. like all these different wings, they're part of the same, the same body. Tools in the medicine cabinet. Yeah, Tools dude. Tools in the medicine cabinet. I love and, how you and, said and that, And we need, we need more, more people to have more exposure to it and and less less misunderstanding of like why physical therapy is so important and why it's totally okay for somebody like myself that has people want thinking that I can help them like i had a gal reach out to me wanting help with coming back from an acl injury that's not my wing right i'm not but but a lot of personal trainers whether directly or indirectly are taught that you just take whoever you can on because right. you need to get clients, you need to make money, yada, yada, yada. Well, first and foremost, the client suffers greatly. You you end up making their injury worse or at best, nothing changes or nothing happens. But just refer out. Refer out to a pro that's going to get that specific type of work done and get it done well, as opposed to maybe chart, play, you know, working with me and it taking me six times longer because I'm having to go outside of my my your knowledge. deeper scope yeah, to try yeah, yeah. and research that and learn that like you're, I would be doing the client a disservice. Yeah, so but for me on my end with an ACL reconstruction, I'm asking questions like, is it post-op? Is it pre-op? Are you in therapy right now? Like obviously, uh, so it's not obvious, but to me and in, in my head, I hear ACL and I'm like, immediately they can't do um, open chain terminal knee extension. Was it just, just like essentially straightening your leg like that? Like they okay. can't do that. If they do, that hurts their, their surgery or their injury or something like that. So in, in one way, it's not in his, but it might be in mine. And that weird kind of like crossover you're describing is actually something I saw in my like ACE personal training, like, you oh, know, exam and yeah, yeah. They, they called it like the healthcare continuum and stuff, but right. it, it was just like the interconnection between all of the facets in healthcare whether it be psychology, psychiatry, um, cardiovascular stuff, respiratory, uh, all of these different sex, personal training was on there, physical therapy, all of these different things. But I think it, it would be a disservice not to go into detail for people and have that information readily, readily available and like explanations of what each little niche is and what it does and how it can help you. Um, and also what it can't help with. Like, um, if you're going to a massage therapist to try to move better, then you're going to the wrong place. Like they might give you a <laughs> massage and stuff and you might feel right. okay, but, but like, they're not working on your ACL is what you're saying. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. See, but that's, uh, that's interesting. And that's where I would like to get more of your perspective and, and as representing a different wing, but I, I, I feel like this prompts going into deeper context around this, but I would argue in some cases getting massage can help move better depending on what kind of massage right, therapist right, right, right. you have. Sure. Absolutely. And I, and I, and I, and I granted I'm speaking, I'm speaking, speaking from the perspective of just my own experience to where having a massage therapist that knows what they're doing work. Like my body is, our bodies are like a car, right? It's a machine in some way, shape or form. And taking the time to have, like when you go get your car washed or if you wash your car or if you do regular maintenance on your car, you're able to look at the body while you're working on it to see if like, oh crap, there's a oh, crack sure. in the okay. hood, like et cetera, et cetera. I like that. That's one, how All I right. view working with them. Uh, that's how I personally view working with my massage therapist where it's like, it's a very serious thing. He's got his hands on my body and he's feeling my muscles and going through Ooh. that check-in. Well, it's true. Like, no, like going through that check-in process to where... <laughs> 
if I'm working with him in conjunction with say someone who's deeper in say like physical therapy, he can communicate that over to the physical therapist and get way more detailed insight sure. as well as just from, and I, this is where I'm looking for more of your insight here, Christian, like just from experience in foam rolling, I'll foam roll. Mm -hmm. I view foam rolling as a self-administered massage mm -hmm. and I notice I can move better. So, so how, how do you, what do you mean when you're, cause Am I, am I off in that thinking no. and through that experience? No, okay. no, no, no. Because if you're, okay, uh, let's say it's, uh, you know, you're going to do like self-massage on your pack, right? Because uh -huh. my shoulders are rounded forward and stuff like that. Okay, you do the self-massage and you notice you're a little bit more upright because that muscle opened up. Therefore, I can move my arm a little bit better. I can do my daily activities a little bit better in that. Sure. Okay. So there's that, but there's also the movement patterns this person has learned over their life. Are they yes. doing okay. the self-massage and then are they going to sit their ass on the couch and get right, right. back to here? So it's, it's one as opposed, as opposed to that move as, as opposed to doing that, which is fine, like self-massage, but having it be a part of a greater continuum, a greater, like it just yes. doesn't start there. That's your five miles an hour yeah. and slowly getting up to a hundred miles an hour to okay. get it's on the relief, freeway. It's relief, but it's not oh, yeah. fixing the problem. It, it's, okay. it, you might be, you know, dusting up the paint job a little bit and, you know, shining, buffing some stuff out, but like underneath right. the hood, there might be a little bit more um, that mm. you're either not seeing or not using or something like that, just because that's not what you're doing in your day. You're not going up and lifting things up and down or, or, or even rec like you're not seeing yourself move. Like if you don't record yourself with a cell phone while you work out, please start doing that because you will save yourself so many injuries. If you just see mm -hmm. if That's you're twisted differently, you gave, if you're you just gave so many Instagrammers, like so much of an out right now, you know, like, no, 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 I don't care. Like for, you can, no, for PT. <laughs> yeah. Like you can show your ass off, whatever. I don't give a shit, but like, <laughs> I'm totally joking. To, to, but the, it's the, it's, makes the sense. it's the exact reason why they have mirrors in gyms mm -hmm. that it's not necessarily for the vanity. It's literally to make sure that you are exercising as efficiently as possible. It, you're developing, you you're developing muscle memory, whether it's bad or good, or maybe if you're sure. lucky, if it's neutral. So that's, that's his rationale behind a phone. I like it. And that's where the, that's where the injury yeah, is yeah. going to, excuse me, <laughs> that's where the industry is going to continue to move is like technology will be leveraged in such a way to where it's inevitable that it's be going to become more in, efficient. You just wait. And I'm saying this to all the people who are naysayers when it comes to whether or not online online training is a legit thing or they can actually get help online. I, I say try try them. If they're a professional, they're gonna get it done. So you, you know, Christian talking about use your phone to record your movements. Like if you're working with somebody, that's exactly what you can do. You can do a Zoom session, you can record the movement and and learn or send that to your coach well, and it, then it, them it, make an adjustment based on what they're seeing on that video. So even in layman's terms, just to, just to like, like second what you're saying, cause that kind of makes a lot of sense. When I, when I see somebody walk, I can tell whether or not they're a runner. Oh dude, uh, I love that stuff. You know what I mean? I love it's, that It's stuff. awesome, right? Yeah, I look like, at I, how people walk and the shifting in their hips and like, right. I feel weird. Cause I'm like, am I looking at your butt right now? But like, <laughs> I'm just looking at like how their heel strikes. If the back heel lifts up before yes. the front one comes down right. and like all that stuff, that's just like or, PT stuff. You know, I, so, so I work on base and I'll, I'll constantly see military guys running um, for different purposes, right? I run while well, I'm on base as well, but a lot of these military guys are running or whatever their affiliation is, you know, there's just all these different, um, branches of the military that you have these different people that have all had instilled training. They've had a lot of culture stuff. They've had Jeez, a lot of, I can't and, even imagine. And, and at the end of the day, what's interesting is you see, uh, um, you, you, like different strike patterns for their feet is one of them that I'll see. Like a lot of guys that are in the military, they wear boots for so long. A lot of them are using their heels to hit the ground. Um, first, that's the first point of contact when it, when it comes down is that's, you know, their heel strikes. And a lot of times people would say that that's now, you know, with the newer science that, the, that, the, uh, that's the improper way to run. Um, when really, uh, I know from running, and this is the only thing I really understand better than maybe most people, unless they're in the running world is that it really is a, it's an adaptation that's personal to each person. Um, and some people that heel strike, it's not necessarily that, um, you know, they, they may end up damaging themselves over a long amount of time. Let's say that they tried to go for a hundred miler doing the, this improper form, but if they can do what they have been training to do, let's say if that's a five mile, 
PT run for being that military run. And they do that on their heel. Their body probably could have adjusted to that, but I can tell when it's hurting them or they're just not in a comfortable place when they run because they're not realizing their form is that problem. That's the thing that's causing the pain. Right. Uh, and maybe I'm tangenting a bit, but that can trickle down to people just walking in the mall. I'll see people that walk and you can tell when they, the way that they pigeon toe or the way that they're, uh, just the way that they stand when they hold their weight, you know, you can tell if somebody has an injury, maybe not all of it. I mean, I'm not saying that I'm, you know, some guru, uh, way less than you guys would be, but you know, I can just tell that, uh, I've, I've had friends, for example, that, you know, they'll try to go for a run with me and they're like, you have no idea this, you know, I don't know how you do it. The running hurts my knees. And, you know, I'm like, well, let's go for a run, you know? So we go for a run and I start talking, I guess, to them shit about their running. And I'm not really talking shit about the running. It's more about like, I could see why you hurt when you're done or you hurt just going this far because look at how you're hitting the ground in your particular case, you are hitting with your heel and that's probably causing your issues on top of, on top of, on top of, you know, um, and, and I love to, I love to be able to see people that can do the same to me. I really enjoy that. And I think that if people are open to that and, and more humbled by that experience to be able to, uh, I, I guess it would be considered almost asking for help, yep. um, you know, or, or, or in the same, uh, 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 you know, you listen to a podcast when you're driving to work, hello. Um, and you hear <laughs> some great advice to record yourself, uh, while you're lifting, you know what I mean? And then you take not while, that. Yeah. While you're lifting, not while you're driving. Not while yeah, you're driving. please. While you're lifting. <laughs> hey. Hey. Uh, um, uh, but yeah, you know, that, that, that's great advice. I think people need to be more open to that. Um, because you have a lot of people that like, you know, are passively, um, they, they would passively love to give you advice. You know, I don't want to be that guy in the gym that goes up and be like, Hey, did you know you're doing that wrong? You know, like, I don't want to be that guy, but exactly. I think that it would be cool if, if somebody felt that they wanted to, to reach out, I wish that was more culturally acceptable, I guess. I don't know. I don't well, know. and part <laughs> yeah. of it, uh, part of it has to do, and I'll, or I'll challenge you part of it when it comes to because I say this as somebody who worked as a personal trainer in a gym and actually at my job being approaching somebody, it's, it's, I feel like it's all in the way that you go about it. Like, Hey, Hey baby, it looks like you need to well, work no, out. Just since you're like, <laughs> so, like I'm big on reframing, man. It's, sure. it's all, it's all a matter of, uh, and, and also having to mitigate or rather mediate really interesting um experiences between like members like people fighting over weights oh really? Oh, oh yeah dude okay. you know big what i mean box so gym I, drama is a like that should be a tv show like big box no, gym he, drama that, that oh, oh yeah Hundred percent. well okay <laughs> so like you're you're supersetting two pieces of equipment going back and forth back and forth oh. and say somebody and in a big box gym it's really hard to do unless the gym's not busy or you have two phones i'm telling you there's a technique to that you put one at the one you know or, on. or you'd put your towel or your water bottle <laughs> right. there which yeah. is fine but also i feel like it's it's really just important to go into it anticipating and remaining sympathetic to knowing and compassionate and knowing that it's going to get taken. Some right. older member that doesn't give a crap or someone that just doesn't give a crap is going to move your stuff off right. of that piece of equipment and use it. It's not worth fighting over. Right, right. I try, I was big and heavy on, how about we just reframe this as an opportunity to meet another friend, right. regardless of whether they just muddied your carpet Right. And, and go over there and get to know them, have a conversation because there might come a time where you're in the gym and you're all alone and you need a spot with some heavy weight. Right. And that person's the only in the only person in there. You you better hope that they're willing to come and right. help you. Like you, you remember that help. time you owe me. Right. <laughs> so and and outside of that, just approaching people to where not necessarily as a means to get them as a client, but it's just like I'm literally happy to give you some free advice that could really benefit your life. Yeah, it's more of a trust Lift. thing. It's honestly right. more of a trust it's, thing. Right. So personally, I feel like it's all in the intro. It's on them if they're not willing to take it, but you can enter that, that, that dialogue in, in a very friendly and positive way. That's half the reason, not half the reason, but that's the part of the intention why I got the, you are loved stickers made. Let's, let's break the tension here. Yeah, yeah. Like you're an awesome human being. You contribute to society in some way, shape or form. Are you cool if I help you with something? I like no, that. no, thanks. It it makes it less less harsh of a no. They they at least respect you. Yeah. Instead of it being this spammy exchange, it's like no, I'm genuinely just interested in helping right. you, or, as well as sending some love your way. Or it's like, intimidating, like you said, because if you have somebody that's really trying to change their life and they're maybe heavy or they're yeah, you know, it's so obvious the differences between you and them. It can seem intimidating to have somebody that's you know air quotes fit come right up and, and provide some perspective. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those things where like once you have the initial interaction, regardless of what it is, I where 
where it's like, you know, the superset example, or um, if it's, you know, they, an, uh, an elderly person asking you how to use a treadmill or a machine, like anything across the board, gym related yeah. at all, like just having that genuine, like positive interaction at first. And like, <laughs> Are those good? <laughs> He's trying those cookies, bro. <laughs> yes. But having that genuine interaction can plant the seed to answer those movement questions and yep, possibly sure. get that person. Yeah, exactly. Just over it's time. It's all on a continuum, um, dude. It, it's, it's not like I have to look at somebody squatting poorly and be like, I'm going to go help them squat better. Just walk myself over to the power rack and be like, Hey, you squat like, <laughs> like, like it might be just like, Hey man, how's it going? Oh yeah, no problem. Have a nice day. And then later on, you know, that guy sees you working there. He's like, Hey, so I've been having some knee pain. This has yep. been happening. And then you get into it. Um, right, so it's right. just like an opportunistic kind of thing. Yeah. Um, C- communication is the long game. Mm-hmm. I like your guys, but, but it ties in. I feel like it ties into the ex- uh, very, very deep themes within podcasting and why people enjoy listening to podcasts. I would argue, and I think we are kind of all in agreement. It provides context, right? But in order to get to context, it takes time, right? You got to have conversations. You got to listen. Gotta sit, <laughs> yes, you got to sit with people. You got to kind of, oh God, you got to get to know them. Oh <laughs> damn, you got to get to know them. That's a lot of work, <laughs> right? <laughs> but it pays off. It does. So the Christian talking about that really makes me think. You plant that seed of like, hey. I, I hope you trust me at some point in time. I have your best interest at heart. I do not care if, whether or not you pay me for my free advice every few days or whatever. Yeah. But we're trying to make the, the world a better place. And I feel like that's that's a community and that's a culture that I can always get behind as opposed to, I and I, granted, I'm speaking from a very jaded view of having left a big box gym and living within that dynamic and it just really hurting me like hurting me mentally, emotionally, and spiritually to where it's like, oh my God, how can you treat a human being as a number? Are you just mad that it was the time that you spent there or it was the fact that you kind of contributed to the machine? No, the it's, I, and again, I, I acknowledge that's, a, that's just being part of a continuum. So well, I, even know, right? I know, even know, I know I got into it, it so. but it's time, but it's, it's part of the reason why halfway through my time working there, I decided I'm just going to start doing online training on the side. I'm going to try, I'm going to plant a seed. And that mainly started as a means of, I saw that the current business model and structures that were in place were not doing God. They were doing a horrible job of actually taking care of the client. I started doing online training because I wanted to provide more fun and effective means of, and compassionate means of support for my right. client. And then not have the big box direction. Cause you can, you could, like you said, you could basically bring other people in right, when right, it's needed. Right. And so not be I, it was just like, I want to do this as a value add because the current business model, personal training of, okay, cool. We're going to work out two hours a week or even one hour a week. I'll see you next week. Figure it out on your own for the <laughs> remaining six days of the week. It's absolutely absurd. Yeah, I, tru- I truly don't believe change happens in the gym. I don't believe it happens when you're working with a trainer. It happens at home. It happens at home. That's where you're spending the majority of your time or it happens while you're on travel. And if you do not have a coach that's equipped to coach you that way, go and find one. If you're not open to doing it, I would encourage you to be open to it because it means you're going to have to expose. Again, it ties to that context right. piece, context. You got to get to nobody to help them. Right. Or you got to get to know no, somebody. No somebody you got to get to help. nobody to help them. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck everybody, yeah, I'm out. I'm <laughs> gone. But yeah, you got you have to get to know somebody in order to help them, dude. And that takes time. Yeah, yeah. And that's well, not going to happen in me, an hour session. I, I want to bring an example up from the third perspective, right? Because you guys are both basically in that industry. I remember being at a big box gym. It might be purple. It might not. And there was a piece of equipment <laughs> that, uh, that uh, it, 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 it kind of plays the superset uh, uh, angle in a, in a way that uh, I think is a perfect example of this. So I remember going to this gym constantly on lunch. And it was really uh, like the only reason why I still go to the gym is really, I mean, I want to look svelte as a minx, don't get me wrong, but, um, it's really to support my running because, you know, in order for me to continue to move, I have to also cross train. Um, and so I'm, yeah. And, and so, uh, a lot of my focus in the earlier days when I first started running was just all body weight exercises. Um, and I still do a lot of that, but at this time I was doing a lot of body weight. So one of my circuits, if you will, was to superset between a machine and then go over and do pull-ups on the pull-up bar. Mm -hmm. Well, this guy, of course, didn't know that I was doing that some guy at the gym and he was having a bad day. Um, and he decides that, 
when he was done with his 10 reps or however many he thought he was doing, um, I came over to look, you know, to like wait for him to move. And as soon as he stepped away, I jumped up on the bar because it's not a piece of weight. It's something that I can, you know, you can switch out on. Um, and I'm like halfway through my set and this guy starts clapping his hands. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking go. And oh, I was wow. like, Whoa, bro. And so I started to slow down oh. <laughs> and, so was good. and I was even like being a dick and I'd like try to do the whole like angle thing coming down. And I'm not, <laughs> don't get me wrong. I did all of 10, so I'm not like a badass, but I was just like, I'm going to, you know, number eight, <laughs> yep, still here, you know? And that guy did not, he didn't win any battles with me. And like, once I got down and I was like, how you doing today? You know? And then he, I think he was surprised that he didn't intimidate me. Right. Um, and then in a place like that, they have like, you know, weird ways that they handle things. So I wasn't going to get into a fight with the guy. Um, I don't need to get banned from my local gym, you know, right. just for this. So I, you know, basically just like laughed at the guy in his face and <laughs> that was the end of the escalation, <laughs> but it was just, it was, you know, it was interesting <laughs> to me because I thought, what's this guy got going on? Like he was not really in shape, right? He's not really like, and I'm not like a big guy. By I'm any laughing stretch. because it's like, this is how fights start. Yeah. Like this is exactly like, over you know, I mean, right, over right. Bullshit. And, but but it, this is what just perplexes me about this whole dynamic is everybody in the gym, including myself, like, you somehow believe that this person's going to be able to read your mind. Right. Like this is what's ridiculous. People are wearing headphones. You can't hear what, like there's these communication barriers just based on that. There's loud weights banging all over the place. Right. You have to stop, take a deep breath right. and have a conversation <laughs> with somebody like the environment in and of itself is tense. Your heart rate is up. Your blood pressure right. is up. This male, is where you're, well, and just in general, feed. Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. And this is, I, I feel like in a very good way, this is where people are letting out primal aggression, yeah. primal human aggression. It's freaking awesome. Whenever right. you feel that high of just like, Jesus Christ, I feel like I could break through this wall <laughs> right now. It's Smell great. The adrenaline but, but, in the air. So is it any surprise why people end up fighting at the gym right. over stuff that requires you got to tone it down. You got to take a little <laughs> bit of a deep breath. You got to let your heart rate lower a little bit. You got to take your headphones off. Yeah. Be cool, man. Yeah, yeah. Be cool and have a conversation. Or, this person's your neighbor, but people don't, yeah, that's easier said than done. Right. That's an art in being able to do that in some kind of effective way in an environment where it's just like, no, I'm going to let out my demons. Dude. Right. Right, like, right. And there's some guys that are going there to let out the demon for the day. Maybe they had a fucked up day at work, you know, right. and, and I'm going to assume that because when I started using the gym to do that myself, um, it eventually caught on that this was like, it's a therapy thing. It's not, I would work. And this is a tangent, uh, Christian into a question that I have for you. I would work out so hard that, um, I was exhausted, you know, and I can go back and I work at a desk and I could just be exhausted and lay on my desk. And I found out that I could start to injure myself pretty quick doing that, trying to do that with running. So when I figured out I could use the gym as a tool and uh, across the board, my mind, as well as my body being therapized, <laughs> is that a word? Therapized? I don't think like so, eating. but like, that I, sounds like therapeutic, like pie when you eat it and it like makes you feel better. <laughs> therapized. <laughs> oh dude, that is so great. Next time I eat pie, I've got a pecan pie frozen in my freezer that my mom made. It's amazing. Next time I eat a slice of that pie, it's the therapy. Therapy. <laughs> therapeutic. Therapy. <laughs> therapeutic pie baby <laughs> so when i was starting to eat my ther my therapy and it was it was doing me some some justice at the gym I, I i noticed that i i had to learn a lot more um pretty quickly about limits of lifting compared to running um and i've heard some different conversations on this and i've asked pat this before but i kind of want to get your take and kind of meld this together so he did ask a question one about foam rollers um so in context to what i'm saying um, how good is a foam roller at reducing, um, let's say I I'm, I'm working out seven days a week or excuse me, six days a week, got a day of rest. I'm running two or three of those days and I'm lifting the days in between. Right. Um, so maybe two or three days lifting, depending on what I'm doing. Um, one, is it, uh, is it considered bad practice to, uh, continually be sore and continue working out like that? Like if I lift today, I run tomorrow and then I lift on that next day, I'm sore. And I almost feel like I could make a decision to not lift being sore like that. Is that a sign from, uh, uh um, um, from, from your perspective, I guess, from a medical perspective, should I say, um, that you should wait longer. <laughs> I'm trying to like, I'm trying to like, you know, like cut the, the cheese here is like no, trying I'm to get into your... at his facial expression. <laughs> okay. So good. I'm not a doctor, but I'll say this. Um, All right. a couple of things. Yeah, Because this, this is where it's like, 
B- and Christian, don't hesitate hold up, to hold correct up. me if you're I'm not wrong. a doctor. Yeah. Wait, wait stop the cameras. Stop <laughs> the I think, I think, but regardless, I think this is great to provide perspective to the listener because this is how you get into nuance of understanding who does what and why. So Christian is very much, very much, he's much farther on the medical esque or scholarly esque continuum. I call it patient education. It's just patient Perfect. education and physical therapy. Well said, you're educating the patient well on what said. you're doing, why you're doing it, how you're doing it, just all that stuff. So when it comes to foam rolling and soreness and that kind of stuff, is it bad? Is it that? No, not really. Unless it's bad. If it's getting in the way of things, if you're injuring yourself because you are sore all the time, then why are you sore all the time? Sure. Okay. You don't, that's, that's not worth it. That amount of intensity to push harder and go, you know, a percent more for that much mm-hmm. soreness over how long are you going to do this? The rest of your life? No, that's not right. worth it. So just like take intensity down but a that's, little bit. But that's the thing, especially with men, they will do that. Right. And then, and then I'll work with older men and they're complaining about being in pain. And I'm like, well, we should probably take off lifting. Right. And we should, we should do a little bit of mobility work and we should, maybe you should take some days off and go get a massage, get your right. fucking nails done. And like that's, something, dude. That's another. And, but actually relax and give your body time to recoup. People don't take the time to acknowledge that. Ladies and gentlemen, anybody watching this, just stop what you're doing and please pay attention. Your rest is the most important workout. It's more important than lifting. It's more important than running, it. period. End of story. You're it. not getting enough sleep. You need to get enough sleep. Don't go harder in the gym. Go harder in bed. Yeah. Like, <laughs> something. And get 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 more rest because <laughs> Scott's losing his mind. <laughs> but you know what I'm the getting at. People, people we're constantly scratching our heads wondering, oh, I don't know why. Like I keep trying this diet. I keep trying these supplements. I keep trying to push myself harder in the gym. I keep trying to just restrict my, my diet so much and things aren't working. You got to take care of your rest, right? You have to take care of your sleep. I view this in the very most, the most positive of ways, but it's, it's viewed in the yoga. I believe it's the yogic practice. It's, it's a death practice. Sleep. Death. Sleep. It's death practice. You need oh, to I rest. Yeah, right. <laughs> you need you need you need to practice taking time to be with yourself and let your body recuperate. Yeah. And so I had to, I had to go on that tangent. No, 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 Christian no that's okay. Say. Um, I think that you know, at, yeah, making sure you get rest because six days a week is a lot. So it might be like a, a three on and one off, a three on and one off kind of thing. Like not as even well going week sleep. to week. Like but, if you're not getting above seven out, I would say seven or more. Yeah, sleep you, is huge. Yeah, you have to be doing consistently. Um, sure. If not, it's I fucking try, tough. Pat. All right, I try, man. <laughs> so getting to uh, the self massage and stuff like that. Do I think foam rollers are the end all be all? No, I I like foam rollers because they're nice for general areas like your mid back, like your quads, your hamstrings, your groin muscles, your IT band stuff like that. Um, but I very much personally enjoy a lacrosse ball or a tennis ball way more than a foam roller. Well, that's because, a, that's another level. Yeah, because yeah. that is that is like trigger point almost. Mm -hmm. Um, and it does hurt and it does feel very uncomfortable and it is painful, (laughs) but afterwards it's like, have you uh, done it? it, it, It's like, a a man, I, for example, I did it here one time. This is like your scaling, your upper trap, all of this stuff up in here, put a ball here, put it, pinned it up against the wall and felt this zing go from here all the way down into the bottom of my foot. Like, it was Damn. very powerful to the point that I felt like a pop in my spine, like a bunch of other stuff. But afterwards, I I, I felt like I could breathe more. Like wow. like I felt like when I took my next breath of air after the ball came off, it was like healing. Like, oh, thank God, <laughs> oh, so nice. So, it, it, but the the drawback with the the lacrosse ball is you have to know how to do it where to yeah yeah the pressure the well, breathing I, the, the I was going to talk to that because I, I like I've I'm I'm gospel on the on the foam roller and it took me a long time and I, I didn't realize that I actually had kind of ascended a little bit into the use of said things until I had a friend that's a complete layman with those right um, and I slowly worked my way into using them over time and at first I didn't understand the I thought it was bullshit because you're not seeing like some immediate effect it's just not. It just seems weird. Like I can just roll myself over this and, and, and I, and I say immediate effect in terms of like, 
I didn't know how to use it. Right. right. Like my IT band was the, the thing that had led me to this. Cause I had my IT band locked up on an eight miler in the middle of fucking July in like a hundred degree weather. Yeah. I was stuck in the middle of the desert and I had to call my wife to come get me. And I couldn't, I couldn't fucking, my leg would not go out yeah. like this. If this is my knee, yeah. it, it would just this spot where the IT band comes down. It was the most pain I'd ever fucking felt in my life. And I was, do you see my Trump ever? <laughs> I mean, you can't see my lips. <laughs> Maybe if the lips were there, you get it. But, <laughs> um, but I had to, I, I, you know, I had to have her come pick me up. I go to a chiropractor. I'm thinking, I don't know what the fuck this guy's going to do. But like, it was the next logical step to me at the time. The dude popped my back and he used this little thing on my knee. The biggest thing is he said, why don't you use this foam roller? And I was like, oh, I've seen, you know, it's like hippie shit, you know? And he's like, no, 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 try it. So I go, <laughs> Cause I didn't know. Right. I laugh so, because so many of my male clients would do that. Exactly. Like, that's, that's, that's for and, pussies. And that, yeah. And that was my mindset. I'd rather be in pain. <laughs> like, all right, dude. I just rather, yeah, I'd rather luck. be in pain forever. Uh, yoga. Pain's is, great. Is that all for ladies? Right. <laughs> so, so I, you know, and I didn't understand it. Well, I started to roll my IT band with it. It would hurt so fucking bad. I would shake violently. So bad, man. So bad, wow. dude. Dude. And, and, and then now I use it every day and I almost can't even tell that it's actually doing what it's doing, but I use it every day because Good. my, I don't have any it problems Good. anymore. Perfect. That's but I, I, but now let's talk about the next level. So where I work is in medical and I work with a bunch of you kind of guys and, and they came up with this lacrosse ball thing. And I'm like, okay, bro, again, I'm back to the hippie talk. Right. right. So this is where, we're, <laughs> cause I'm like, I don't understand. A uh, homeboy's got two lacrosse balls that are taped together. Yep. And then you roll on that motherfucker, bro. Change your life. I have one. I, I tape yeah. two tennis balls together. I like to use it for the back of my skull, like right below oh, your dude. skull for headaches oh, and tennis stuff. Ball is oh perfect my God. So yeah. like, like, but the taped one though, because your spine fits right in the middle right, of it, right and the then center. on oh, either yeah. side of it, you got the ball like pushing into your paraspinal paraspinal yep. m- m- uh, muscles next to your spine. You have them on each, like your like our loins that go down on the side of it. Right. Yeah, you loins. Can, he said loins. You can do them <laughs> all the way down. It's it, it is amazing. But um, so like you're saying, you know, kind of going a, a next level deep, a next level deep. The next level deep is a massage gun, getting one of those, yeah. like, um, it's basically like a jigsaw that has like a ball on it and you just, mm-hmm. wherever you want to go. Um, Christian, I just got one of those, bro. Yeah. I, did. I feel like I'm doing good. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's, that's, I need to get one, dude. Those are, I, I got a cheap one though. You that's need to get fine. Good, you got to start somewhere. Dude. So the cheap ones are nice because even though they may break a little bit more often, uh, they're generally quieter. The battery is a little bit more um, replaceable. Um, okay. A lot of Theragun models and a lot of um, like other models, they don't have like replaceable batteries or interchangeable batteries mm. or anything like that. Right. And they're very, very loud. Um, some of them don't have the actual like control for how much power is on it. Super annoying. If it's just one setting, that's really yeah. annoying. Um, having multiple settings for different areas that are maybe yeah, more yeah. sensitive than others is, is really nice. Um, but yeah, the, the, so generally doing that stuff once a day, like that's, there is rationale to support that there is, um, like that's, that's a good thing to do, but the, the way you should probably go about doing the, the smashing, the massaging once a day is pick, pick a body part, pick one place that you want to massage, do that one place for a week, once a day, it'll probably free up. A, a, a quite a bit, like significantly enough to where you remember with your IT band where you rolled it and it's like, oh, I don't feel that much. Yeah. That'll happen to where you just Eventually. go there. It, it won't happen. Like you won't feel like there's much going on there. It'll feel more supple or what, what have you. That's, that's how it should feel is that's not all amazing night, not enough. Yeah. So, um, I, I mean, when I went through it with, you know, my, my shoulder and stuff for me, it was the upper trap muscles and, and this stuff here for some people, it's their low back. Like you may want to try, uh, just a single lacrosse ball on your low back, not on the spine, but again, on the muscle next to it. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Um, makes me feel like I want to go stretch right now, bro. Yeah, I kind of do too. That sounds nice. But, um, <laughs> But yeah, you know, there there, absolutely there's rationale to do that once a day. And what you're looking for is, uh, you know, that that normal feeling, not the trigger point feeling. Sure. To get to that. Um, Sure. Well, and it took so so I I, I've talked about this with the audience before, and and Pat knows about this, but I just went through a. I kind of decided to stand up on a marathon um, in a like I had five weeks run up to it. 
um, for training. And so I, you know, he basically paid for a race and I needed to get ready, like within this time frame. That's all within I had five weeks. You needed to get ready for a marathon. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, Morgan. And, and, and I'd gone from, you know, like, I know you've got a, you've got a stronger base for, I think it's important for people to know you've got a stronger base true. for yeah, running. He's a runner. Yeah. Like I, I couldn't do right. that in five weeks. <laughs> well, and yeah. So I think it's important to provide context yeah, because I, if people don't know any better, they're like, Oh, okay. Yeah, Morgan did that. it in five weeks. There's, I can like Morgan's got, hundreds upon thousands of miles of running Man, under absolutely. his belt as a baseline foundation. Okay. Continue. Yeah, Sorry. No, I had to, I had no, to no, put no. that I, in there. I very much appreciate that. Cause that's context is, is much appreciated. Cause it's not something that I would recommend people do quickly, especially at, and I, and again, I go back to it. I realize I'm not old, uh, and that's all perspective, but, um, it, to me, the older I get, the harder it is to fucking beat myself up for something like a five week train up. Um, and I turned the switches on, like I went from a very easy, like maybe 20 to 25 miles a week, um, running at moderate paces to like adding in like track days and then adding in like, um, focused tempo runs going uphill and through the mountains of people that are incredibly fast compared to me and just challenging myself for those five weeks. Um, and it panned out, like I didn't get first place. I got eighth, I guess. Wow. Yeah, eighth that's good. Out of 24 that were in the, in nice. the field. And it was a, it was a, a, a trail. So, so my whole point is, is these three different levels to, again, a third perspective to me, the reason why that's beneficial to me is my, my running coach, um, who I, I hope to actually bring on one of these days, maybe with the, the three of us, um, and him, he would talk to me about how he said, you cannot neglect, uh, your body at all during this time. He said that if you want to even complete this and go through this training, you know, and he added that caveat with me, <laughs> a star, because he's, much faster than me. He said, you need to make sure you're fucking rolling. You need to make sure that you're using your lacrosse ball and you're using your, and he had actually turned me on to the Theragun. And again, I thought it was kind of glitchy. He even has the compression pants that you mm -hmm. pull on and you right. press a button and it airs them up and move the, the circulation again, another level. Um, and, uh, uh, he has an ice machine that he bought just to build ice yep. packs for himself and ice baths. I want to, I want to do that. I want to have a mini ice machine in our garage yeah, for that reason, get, as well as just get camping. like a freezer. That's, you know, one of the garage freezers, put ice in that. And walk. Right. Yeah. Well, these, it, it, you know, and, 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 and he's like, you know, and I thought, man, I don't know if I'm that kind of athlete, you know, but like he was just selling it back to me. He's like, if you want to do this and you don't want to be injured, you need to fucking like go all in fun. here. Yeah. yeah. And you want to have fun because I did one marathon in 2014 and I almost fucking died. Like I had a, a cop follow me trying to get me to get in an ambulance at mile the 24 because I was like, I couldn't even walk this one. I actually finished and we went shopping afterwards with my family. And it was all because I went through these a lot of the knowledge that I get from Pat, a lot of the knowledge I get from my running coach and more people that I bring into my circle and the more knowledge that I bring in and, and, and add it in intrinsically to my training for my particular thing. It's kind of fun to see how it, I mean, I work in it, like I'm at a computer for nine to five, I'm not working outside. So if, if I want to complete a marathon, my training matters because, you know, and my rest, mm -hmm. you know, well, and, that's part of your training. It's right. Not, that's the thing. It's not separate. Yeah. And, and <laughs> like I think your, your training is your, your rest is, is part of the rest. Yeah. And, and I think what's, what's going to be cool is in future episodes, not, not, uh, you know, hopefully you like this and we do more. <laughs> yeah, dude, this has been awesome. Like, thank you so much for, sure. for having me on. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Um, I want to try to get your, your, and, and, you know, and I, I don't know if some people, uh, get bothered by this, but I'm just going to continue to take it for running, but I have a hundred miler coming, um, Holy in shit. September. Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of bit off a little more than I wanted to chew. I got Wait, challenged say that so again. I have a hundred miler coming in September, my hundred mile race. <laughs> okay. Remember, I think I was telling you about that. Yeah, You've got eight months, eight months. So really for that, um, I'm going to be a little smarter. So my, my official training coming online is going to be six months out. So in April, I start actually running, um, 20 Hold times. On, what is Oh, okay. There's a gimbal. It's all, <laughs> it's all confused. That's some technical malfunctions here. Um, no, but I'll be, I'll be running basically like anywhere between like 30 and 50 miles a week for six months. You know what I mean? Um, and I'd love to be able to, to just kind of bring things up that, um, you know, we can talk about on here, which may be way into a spectrum that a lot of our listeners may not be at, but in the same breath, I'm also going to be taking myself again. I don't know this knowledge. I, I learned this from you guys, um, and trial and error and, um, yeah, I think it's going to be kind of interesting to see how this all pans out for, for things. Cause I think it'd be cool to see how I can apply your guy. Cause I'm sure I'm going to fuck myself up between now. And yeah. Then, so. And it might be something where we have a private call or something like that and talk about that stuff, you know, one-on-one well, -on -one, just because it might mean I have to like get this and show you how to move and like all of this. Like, no, no, no. Like, yeah. It, but I mean, for the podcast purposes, we can definitely, I mean, we can get deeper on that and I appreciate absolutely. that as, as a different thing, but in the podcast, it's cool to use my, my fuck ups, I think. And I love doing this with Pat. I'm like, Hey, I did this crazy shit. What do you think? And he's like, 
man. <laughs> Uh, it, it's you know. like man you're making this way more <laughs> all right so last year on uh 420 i did 420 burpees uh 10 oh, wow. burpees every minute on the minute for 42 minutes dude um, and that was just so i could have smoke weed for the day like that was goodness. <laughs> I could go part, part. I am proud of you, bro. Yeah. I mean like doing crazy shit like that. Like it's really cool. Like for me, uh, there's, there's a 40 mile trail that connects basically like, um, a, a, a park from a lake near, near my house all the way up into like the central part of the state. Like where, where are you at again? I'm in South, Southeast Michigan. Um, like right next to Lake Erie. And, um, there, yeah, there's a trail that goes like 40 miles into the state. I want to walk that trail and just like, just walk it what a day or two like a day hike and it, it's it's not even like a, through mountains or anything it's just like a path so like right. it's awesome. not going to be super treacherous or anything like that but yeah doing some some kind of crazy shit like that at some point it's like a re- you know I, i'm human i can do this i'm going to do something right. <laughs> and be badass about it just because i can and just because right. i can <laughs> it's, it's very fulfilling when you when you can take something like that on like like the 420 Bro. thing or, or anything like yeah that. yeah i i tried to do a, a five miles or four miles every uh out fuck how did it go it was it was four miles no it was five miles no, you did every, something super crazy it was oh god damn it i don't remember the cadence i'm trying to think of it so i would do 30 miles in 24 hours so i would do a piece of that every uh uh four hours every yeah every four hours i do five miles yeah so that worked out so sounds like david uh, goggins <laughs> so. it, it was it, it was in line with that um but after like i was i ran at like you know like nine or it was like 5 p.m anyways i was forced four different five mile pieces in it's like seven in the morning my buddy challenges me to a bike ride and i've talked about this story before i go on dragon's back which is this that crazy place that he's got a uh, video from him going and and as well as some friends of mine that have gone and done it. And it's this awesome 11 mile bike ride thing. Well, we rode it on bikes and I go all the way down, all the way back. Then it was time for my next circuit, which would be miles 20 through 24, 25, whatever it was. And so I get into my, uh, um, running shoes and I go to take off and I hadn't been eating properly. And my body actually bonked and my legs started to give out from underneath me. And I was stuck out on the fucking dragon's back somewhere randomly. And like, I'm trying to walk and my, literally my, my hamstrings and my, everything is just shutting off. It would not hold me up. And I'm just like collapsing to the floor. Right. And I felt like those guys you see at the end of those Ironman races, you know, when you see them just like fucking spaghetti trying to right. walk and people are coming up and like carrying them and shit like that. So I fucked up uh, many a time. And uh, you know, that was right before, actually that was the earlier in last year before the marathon. And I, I had that very fresh in my mind when I started training for that marathon. So I try to not, fuck up but i in the same breath like i bounce shit off pat like that and then he's like bro well you already said all the problems you said you didn't eat you said you didn't <laughs> right. you know and and i need that i need that that bounce back because otherwise it's an echo chamber like i'm just not tough enough you know right. i could have said you know what i mean and i think that kind of encapsulates kind of what yeah what my what my idea is for what we could do in the future is just kind of bouncing shit off in the podcast and talking you know what i mean when it just so- creates it go ahead christian you said you were in the uh working on base what you said it was a military base were you in the military Mm -mm, i was not okay all right Uh, just random question but go ahead patrick (laughs) no you're good but it just yeah because otherwise if you don't get your stuff addressed this obviously the sooner the better in whatever way you feel like it needs to be looked at the the human condition is only going to get more difficult but like what you were talking about if you don't you can look at this on a big scale of just people's lives, or you can look at it as through a small scale, but you have to understand that they're all interconnected. So you talking about, yeah, you said it yourself, all the things that you needed to do a little bit better on that, that last run you did. Right, well, right. if people don't know better, and again, I would continue to venture to the space of as long as people are willing to adopt an open like be, perspective, be humble, essentially. Yeah, an open perspective with curiosity laced all the way through it. You're otherwise, your experience is otherwise going to turn into you just thinking running or it's not for uh, me. Or, yeah. Like, oh, it's not for me. I, I did it and it was horrible because X, Y, and Z. And it's like, no, the intention was not there to the level at which it probably needed to be. Right. It's, Preparation was fucked. More right. Than. And I, but I say, <laughs> I say the same thing relative to life. People aren't taking, we're not taking the time to pause and take inventory of the little things that we maybe need to improve and adjust and be proactive about in order to make the journey a little bit more fun and give you the, the ability to be more present right. while, while doing it. Like, like what Christian is saying, being able to walk that 40 mile path, he's not talking about just getting through it, 
I would also venture to say he's talking about getting through it and being present the entire time. Yeah. Much like what you were talking about. And you like finished your marathon, yeah. Morgan. Yeah. Morgan finished his marathon, was able to go grocery shopping with his right. kids. And that was special. It really it, was. You know, that's that's the second, third time you've made mention of that. And I think it's important to make note. It's about ingrating and infecting presence into life. And whether it's just doing the dishes or cooking your dinner, whatever it might be there's a baseline level of health that is needed to be able to do that. And if you can try and do at least enough for that, if not, maybe a little bit more, I feel like the experience that is life would become just dramatically more pleasant. God damn it, Pat. You have some one-liners, bro, that I just, I cannot, Sorry, I, I get on these. Guy. I get on these freaking crazy heaters. <laughs> I have quotables dude. too. I like the, don't forget the fucking <laughs> snacks. Like that's definitely a quotable <laughs> moment. <laughs> I'm not going to forget about you, brother. I got you. Dude. Sorry. I, <laughs> I had to go on a tangent and I'll shut up now. <laughs> no, you don't uh, have to because that's 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 <laughs> it. Like like being present is is so difficult for for so many people because I feel like we're trying to be present so hard that we're actually not when the uh the like our body, our mind knows how to do it. It's just we have to give it permission and let it and you know take part in the actual activity of like trying to be here and not Okay, I have a board <laughs> exams and clinicals and like, oh man, I want to play video games and stuff like that later. I don't have the energy to go through my day and blah, 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 blah. So I'm just going to go to sleep and do nothing. And like, it just like always, like for a lot of people just turns into nothing, chilling in bed on our phones, not participating in, in Bro, I can attest to that. what life actually is, which is beautiful, which is great, which is dramatic and up and down and left and right and all of these different things. And it's just, it's, it's way more worth it to, to participate in those ups and downs rather than being numb and being yeah. numb and, and, or, or, or stricken with anxiety and depression and all these Man, things. And that speaks to a lot of things uh, for sure. I would way rather be, be, be present, be here and enjoy French toast and stuff. <laughs> and bacon. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's true, dude. I I think you put it very, very eloquently. That was awesome. Well, what do you guys? Uh, what do you do? You, do you have any uh, um, a closing closing statements for us? Anything that you feel like we didn't cover, brother? Music. I, I definitely want music. What you got, Patrick? What's up? Talk to me. What? What do you want to talk about music wise? Um. Okay. Christians holding me accountable. Uh -oh. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah. I, again, I'm not saying this as a professional endeavor. It's more as just a means of expression and being able to just vent and have a means to have fun and have a hobby. I'm going to learn how to mix music. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and Christian produces and mixes music. So he knows his stuff. And I, I just, I, I know, I know, I know well enough to know that, okay, if there's something that is going to bring more joy and passion into my life and serve as a positive outlet, I shouldn't keep that to myself. Right. So I threw it out to Christian knowing that he'd help keep me accountable and help build out like part of my office to where oh, I can go all in. Okay. Oh yeah. I want to be able to do work at my desktop computer. And then if I want to take a break for an hour and just play mute, I, and I'm just talking, I want to be able to just hit play on a song and then blend it and transition it into another song that's in awesome, my, in, you know, that I have or, or that I see and, and just be able to have fun with that. Yeah, yeah. Cause it, it ties back to when I was in college. I, and I didn't do it expertly well, but it was a means of engagement for me and college. I didn't, I didn't drink. I didn't do any substances, any of that. So at parties were very hard for me. And the best way for me to be a part of the party was like, screw it. I'm just going to play the music. Oh, that's awesome. I'll play dude. the music. People enjoyed the music I played. People still enjoyed my tastes around music. Your so dance like, parties. Yeah. So <laughs> I just want to have fun with it. And I'm going to lean on somebody like Christian to Dude, that's to awesome. help me help me with that. Uh, I will say like one, when, like I, I totally understand the, the, the gratification that you want out of just being able to control when the next song mm -hmm. comes in, what the next song is like, cause Spotify doesn't do it. Like Spotify is not, uh, yeah, it's great for the everyday commute and stuff like that. But when I'm at home trying to vibe and chill and stuff like that, and I want to participate in mm -hmm. the, the, the process I, got, that yep. I'm enjoying being able to, to have that power and that I, freedom is I miss the, uh, I, I miss the, the fade-ins, you know, like you get the DJ fade-ins, you know, I, Google music is what I use. And when the service first got released, they used to fade between songs mm -hmm. and you'd have one fading out while the next one would come in. And it was just that little tiny thing that made all the difference. Now it's cut and dry. It's right as the last song ends, then it 
kicks to the next one, which yeah. is all those. It's all about now. the transition. Man. It's all, and yeah. I yeah. feel like that's an art in and of itself. Yeah. And that's, that's just what I, I want to, I want to play with. I did it a little bit. And, but I'm bummed that I didn't keep with it when I was younger just to continue fiddling with it because right. I would be in a much more... Well, don't more, be bummed. Uh, you're doing well, it no, but No, I, no <laughs> I, and I'm, I'm glad I'm doing it. By all means, I'm not going to a place, but it speaks to a very, very important theme in my life and what I try to convey to everybody who's willing to listen to me run my mouth is like, if there's something that you're, you've always thought about doing and you were worried about what other people were going to think if you did it or what life would be like, if you did it, you need to go do it. Fuck yeah. You're, we're going to, we're all going to die. That, dude. I want to, I want to know by the time I'm ready to croak, whether it's tomorrow or long into the future, I want to be able to look at, at what I've done and what I've tried and be like, you know what? I loved what I did. Fuck yeah. Regardless of how much money I made, etc. So I'm going to learn how to play music for me. We'll I want a bobcat. That's, that's, I want a bobcat. That's that satisfied. <laughs> I just want a bobcat and my own plot of land and just move dirt from point A and just set it at point B. I'm like, I'm just perfect answer. A big dude. sandbox. Life is complete. Like, <laughs> yep. so, so if we're going to talk about tangenting, one thing I've always wanted to do with this podcast, which I've never been able to do, which we might be able to find a way to make this work. I've always wanted, cause I, I do interview uh, musicians or bands and I try to, you know, work some stuff in me, have our, our boy over here come out with the the band sitch, huh? Huh? What do you think, Scott? But it's something like that would be cool to try to do on a podcast that you could es- essentially have a conversation and record a live session of them playing and have it actually sound, uh, you know, good. Yeah. And all of that be in the podcast, almost like a, a, a like a MTV unplugged kind of a thing, but with a fucking podcast in the mix. Yeah. You know what so I mean? through Zoom, that would be fucking cool, right? Through Zoom, what I think, uh, if you were to make me host, I'd Still, be able bro. to screen Again. share, and then you'd like I could pull up Ableton, and I could run Ableton's audio to you guys because it would be being screen shared and stuff like that. So I think that might be something where already got fucking moves for us, could, bro. I'm loving it. We could probably <laughs> like test it. Cause you, you could do that with anything. It's just the desktop audio. It's just where you're routing it. That's the important part. Like the microphone, you know what I mean? No, totally right. got it. Yeah. I, and honestly, like as Pat, as Pat could tell you, we're, I'm ramping the podcast back up. I used to be after it a lot. Um, and then I slowed down cause my wife was finishing nursing school, but she's all done. So now I get to have some fun so we can, mix all of our fucking ideas bro and i think the next one's gonna be uh even better bro we might just have you here as a fucking hologram just like dancing right here bro and just be like what up doc you know (laughs) (laughs) well brother i I appreciate you man what's uh what's what's a way that uh any of our listeners can follow you or or websites what do you got what's uh, what what are you working with these days Uh, my website is actaware.net a-c-t-a-w-a-r-e.net um, on social media, I'm usually act underscore aware, A-C-T underscore A-W-A-R-E. Um, you said usually. Do you have like a another moniker that you uh, – are you actually the, the real Donald J. Trump on, on uh, Twitter and you're not, you're not telling us? Is that No, you know? no. My, my alter ego is Spooky Action, uh, Spooky oh, X shit, Action on you. SoundCloud and Spooky yeah. X – yeah, I think it's Spooky X Action on Twitter too. Um, that's what I make music under. The Spooky Action is just that kind of project and what I've called that. Um, but yeah, that's me. <laughs> so quick question, Christian, um, on the names, where'd you get act aware or action? Is it action aware? Action awareness is the name of the business. Um, that came from, I mean, obviously that's a hundred percent influenced by you, Patrick, because yours is aware online coaching. Mm, or aware training. I didn't see, I didn't, so I didn't know that. Okay. There was the, that was kind of what I started with and I'm like, but what is it? What is the me part of it? And when you're aware of your action, like you're aware of your movement, just something changes. Like you're, 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 you, you bring and facilitate awareness and presence and positivity and all of these different things by improving your movement and improving the way that you try to live your life or your eating or your sleeping habits or all these different things that are tied together. So it was just kind of like take action and be aware of it. That so that just kind of came together. Um, spooky action actually came from, uh, my buddy, Joshua. Uh, we were trying to make a PlayStation four 
like gamer tag name and he just shot it out and he described spooky action as quantum entanglement which einstein observed as um basically if, if you have like atom a atom b and distance x regardless of how far apart those things are when you measure them or when you observe them they instantly become the same thing they instantly change or you know will align themselves to be connected in some like quantumly like entangled way so making music under that and and sharing sound to like it's kind of like you're 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 sharing that same kind of connection i'm over here but you're feeling what i feel through this kind of like yeah. sonic projection um this hyp- hypnosis deep, beautiful bro. hypnosis but huh. yeah it's um, well, i thought you were just gonna go half-hearted bro but you went you went all left dude, and then right bro. <laughs> oh, fuck, Morgan, i love it bro Morgan, this is why christian's my boy dude like <laughs> hello hi <laughs> hello hello <laughs> He's got layers. No donkey. I, yeah, <laughs> I am an onion. Layers. I am definitely yeah. an onion. That's for sure. But yeah, guys, I love it, bro. Thank you so much for having me on. This has been like a serious, like, like I've needed to have an, a human interaction for a long time. So thank you so fucking cool. much for just being yeah, hell yeah. part of the quantum podcast. entanglement, brother. That yeah, is yeah, I feel you over here, bro. The need. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, you know, getting on this, it's just a matter of scheduling. Whenever you want me on, I'm here. Cool. Okay. Sounds good, brother. Well, as you all, as you guys have heard before, you guys know where to find Pat, but Pat, please uh, bless us with your contact sure. information. Sir. www.aware.training. And then on Instagram, it is at aware underscore life A B Q. Sweet. And then we got PPG podcast, but you guys are listening to the podcast. So apparently you know where it's at, but <laughs> Uh, People Pursuing Greatness is also uh, photographed, videographed, and edited uh, by Mr. Scott Marin. Scott, what is your, uh, what is your, what is, is it your, at, is it at Scott M. Photos? Scott Michael. Is it Scott Michael? Scott Michael Photos. That's right. It's the sexy one with the signature, at huh? Scott Michael Photos on Instagram. Yep. And then of course, all the links will be in the description and I'm going to probably, um, with my super long intros, you know, I noticed they're getting out of hand. I'm going to try to keep my fucking intro down to like two minutes. It was five minutes on my last one. And I was like, you know what? I bet eventually for Joe Rogan territory for when you start getting (laughs) there's, there's super, uh, advertisements. I was going to say there's zero ads and I'm over here for, I'm like, this fucker went for five minutes. I'm like, okay, start the, you know, I'll make it shorter, but I'll definitely put all everybody's contact info in the, in the description and in the intro. We love you guys. Keep moving out there. Uh, you know, be aware of what you're doing and when it, and, and take and action, there take action. And you know, the, the whole theme of the podcast is, is to hopefully motivate y'all to get up off your asses and off the couch and do something. <laughs> but so doing we, that, just don't forget you are loved. You yeah. are loved. All right. Yeah. And with that, I think we can end this thing. Appreciate you guys. Thanks dude.